Welcome everyone, thanks for the very warm welcome. Um, yes, I've been an agronomist in this area since the early 1980s and uh, have seen both good times and, and drought periods in that, in that time, but this is by far my guess, most challenging period that we've all seen as far as rainfall and drought conditions. And what I wanted to do today is just explore our climate here, how this drought compares to previous ones, how we need to think about droughts in our farm management, and also talk about how this drought has affected the pastures and our livestock operations. So I've got a series of slides to run through and we can take as many questions as you like at the end. This drought, this is scone down there. You can see, you can virtually work out where most of the studs are. Sedgeno Valley, Glenbourne Dam, Sedgeno Arrowfield there. So it hasn't changed much since that photo was taken four months ago. But I've never seen the district in such bad shape. It is the worst 24 month period in 120 years of rainfall records. We rely on currently 100 years of rainfall records that are recorded officially. But really 100 years of climate data is just a blip in the Earth's and Australia's history. You know, there's millions of years of history of climate and scientists are now trying to understand what has happened in Australia's environment over much longer periods to get a better feel for how our current climate compares to previous periods. And what they've been doing is looking to generate uh, long-term climate data from ice cores in Antarctica, tree ring studies, and also coral growth ring studies, such as this. The rings in coral are very much the same as rings in tree growth and they can understand a lot about flows of water, flood events coming into the uh, barrier reef from discharges so they can understand climate well back from what recorded dates. So the ice core study in Antarctica which has been published generated data from a thousand years of what Australia's climate was and it showed that Australia experienced very regular periods of droughts. And in fact, one of the longest periods of droughts ran for 40 continuous years. And there was a period where there was 80 out of 110 years that were a drought year. So droughts are not nothing new to Australia. But there was also a wet period in the 1730s to 60s. So wet and dry cycles are very common for our environment. Even our early settlers, when the first fleet arrived and settled in Farm Cove in 1788, they arrived in reasonably good climatic conditions. There was rain, there was green, there was water flowing out of creek lines near Farm Cove, just near the Opera House and the Botanic Gardens where they first settled. And then two years later they went into a roaring drought like we're in now and the whole colony was at risk of failing because of the lack of water and food, they had failed crops, their livestock were getting thin and there was great concern about the sustainability of colonisation in Australia. So in this, and it was only just recently been discovered that there was a guy that called Dawes that kept journals on the climate and rainfall for the colony that has been now published and reviewed. And his work ran from this period here, the first 72 years of the colony. And when they looked at that data, in that 72 years, they experienced 27 drought years and 14 wet years. So there's nothing new about droughts and floods. I think they'll just be a continuing part of our, our climate. We need to ex 
accept that and learn to manage our farm systems to take account of droughts and floods. I'm just going to play this little slide here which shows you Australia's climate pattern of above and below average rainfall over the last hundred odd years. So the heavier blue means well above average rainfall. The redder that gets means it's the lowest on record. And I think it just gives you an appreciation of how diverse our climate is and how variable it is. Some scientists rate Australia as the most variable climate continent in the world. We are certainly the driest inhabited continent in the world. We're not the driest continent. Antarctica is, is that. So if you get it in a trivia question, we're the driest inhabited continent. All right, let's see if this plays. Hopefully it does. So this is just running through each of the years and see that there's a range of uh, from wet to dry in any year throughout Australia. It's not uniform. There's going to be wet periods and dry periods continually changing. You'll see there's drought and below average rainfall is a very common feature in most years somewhere in Australia. For the 30s, that was a particularly bad drought time in the World War II period. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. Well, I think that's sort of a slide. The 50s or wet period, Maitland flood was in 1955. We get into the mid 60s, 1965, 66 was a particularly bad drought in the Hunter and most of New South Wales. So we've had these droughts and wet periods. The 70s, when I went to school, I can always remember taking a raincoat to school. I don't know if kids ever wear raincoats these days. But, you know, wet periods uh, were around certainly in those 70s and 80s, and I'll deal with that a little bit later. But we've had some drought periods over more recent times, and you'll see those pop up. Early 2000s, there was a pretty significant dry period there too. The drought in Scone sort of started, I think, probably it started to progress to, on its journey in sort of autumn 2017. And you can see here, what was happening, this is below average of red and blues uh, above average, that there was some mild drought starting in 2017, progressed to a more severe state last year. This is the last 12 months of rainfall decile, so in lots of areas in New South Wales, it's very much below average or the lowest ever recorded. So it's certainly a very significant drought at the moment and unfortunately it's not over yet. <coughs> Let's look at Scone's rainfall over the last 120 years. This 600 millimetre line is just a little bit below the long term average which is 625. <coughs> but here you can see all the red years are the years with below average rain and above the line in the blue they're all above average. So look at the early 1900s drought years. Look at this period here in the 40s, which is a bit of a concern that it can do this. We've got seven years consecutively of below average rain. We've only had two. There's the 65 drought, and we've had some droughts here in the 2000s. But look, we do get, you know, above average rainfall periods after droughts. So this current drought, as I said, is the driest 24 to 30 month period so far in 120 years. <coughs> We've really had what I would call no effective rain for many months in succession over the last two years. Now effective rain, like we five mils of rain is not going to be effective, it's not going to grow pastures. 
because it's just ground is too dry, the evaporation is too high, we've got no subsoil moisture. So small events of rainfall, less than sort of 10 mils, hardly make a difference to um, the soil moisture situation. We've certainly had shorter droughts that might run for six months or 12 months, but there's also been longer droughts. So we're in about two and a half years. Um, interesting, April to July this year, we've only had 28 mils, which is the driest April to July period on record. Some of the long range forecasters that uh, are suggesting we, the, the Earth may experience a drier and colder cycle associated with low sunspot activity. Um, that's not for me to go into today, but it's something I'm reading a lot into, studying and just seeing how that goes. But most of our bigger droughts have always been associated with low sunspot activity. I guess what question I'm leaving you to think about is if we're going to go into a, a drier uh, cycle, what changes would you need to do to your farm to be able to operate in a lower rainfall environment if we go back to some of those pre-early uh, settlement sort of records where they had you know, multiple years in a row of droughts? One of the things I thought I would do is just have a look at this year compared to what I call the Gang of Five drought years, those very big drought years, the 1900s, the 1918, 19, the 1960s, some in the 80s and 90s, and just see if they give us some idea of what's happened. And interestingly enough, um, Periods for 12 months. 
it's the second driest if I go back three years. Fifth driest if I look back four years and the seventh driest if I go back five years from today. So it's up there in the top ten of drought periods and it's certainly our currently our driest 24 to 30 month period. I suppose I was going to give you some good news story. Here's the lowest recorded rainfall out of January after that period. Right? And for that to get there, even to be the lowest, we've got to get 345 mils. So the positive out of that, records are not broken by much, so I would think that we're going to be somewhere in there. They, none of these lines have ever done this have tended to float in here. So to make that a little bit easier, I've pulled out, this is this median line, and then the lines for the worst droughts, 39, 41, 19, 18, 20, 100 years ago virtually, 94, 96, 65, 67, 1901, 03, and our current drought. Notice they all tended to float in the same line. This one's flat lining, but it, with all probability, it should get back into that pack at some point in the next few months. So we will get some rain. Most of our most serious droughts, we tended to get 300 to 450 millimetres per annum. And they're highlighted there at less than 450 mils to show you those really dry periods. And from 1960 back to 1900, there were 12 dry periods like that. And from 1960 to today, there were only eight. So early settlers, early uh, property owners experienced a couple of times on what we've currently had. Just look at the 35 to 42 period where we had this group of below average rainfall to average rainfall which made a very extended drought period. Not what we want to know about. This is a graph I just want to spend a few minutes on because I think it's quite um, revealing. As I say, 1900 to 1950 was a particularly dry phase in Australia's climate. Then we went into a very wet period and then if you look at a trend line here we're going back dry again. And this graph here is a cumulative rainfall graph that shows you so every time there's a negative there you take it off your balance. It's like a balance account in your bank. We certainly run the bank account down pretty low here with these big periods of below average rainfall. Then we went wet and we peaked here and now we're heading back. One of the concerns I've got is that most of the generations on farms, most of the people in social media, have only experienced conditions here. And I think we've probably got an unreal expectation that that's what the climate we should be getting all the time. And I'll just try to demonstrate here, it doesn't stay that way. And it can, and it's shown that it can get back down here. The other concern is that a lot of agricultural practices were developed in this period here research on pastures, farm management, were all done here in the 50s to 80s and we were in a wetter period. And I think some of that probably needs to be reviewed. But I think the current generations of farmers have probably experienced a better run of seasons than early forefathers have. So just need to think about that pattern it does change, climate tends to run in cycles, I don't know whether we're going to come back down here and then come back up or it'll be 
you know, float around here. But you just need to be aware of where it has been before. Let's just quickly look at what's the probabilities of certain rainfall events for this spring. Uh, I think if we do get rain now, I think our spring is largely over at this time of year, in August and September's not far away. But you can look at the probability of all years, like this year is an unusual year, but if you want to get a bit of a feel for the odds of certain rainfall events, so uh, in August, if 25 mils are an inch in the old scale, there's a 60% chance of getting 25 mils. If you want to get 100 mils to help you get out of trouble, is about a 2% chance. You see, as we move from August to October, the probabilities of getting rainfall increase, much higher probability. And over the combined three month period, like there's a 97% chance we're going to get an inch, but an inch is not going to do a lot of good to us. Now, we need to be in these sort of figures here. There's a 1% one, 1 chance to get 300 mils. If it has happened before, maybe it'll do that again. We really need soaking rain events now, like small uh, amounts of rainfall over an extended period of time is not really going to do much to it, our uh, moisture situation. So we actually need rainfall to occur over a fairly confined period to be effective. So in the uh, data you can ask, okay, 25 mils over seven days or 14 days, what's the chances of getting it over that sort of restricted period? They're not particularly high. You know, there's only a 50% chance of getting 25 mils. And really no chance of getting sort of six inches of rain over those periods of time in those months. So the odds are not good for big rainfall amounts because that is not Australia's climate pattern. We tend to get small amounts of rain per month and in small individual falls. So it's going to take a little while for this drought to, to really be down. Let's just look at August to December rainfall historically. There's the 250 mil line, which is close to the average of 265. I think the lowest recording was in this 1940s or so, with 100 mils and the highest of over 500 mils back in the early 1900s. So we've not had less than 100, and we've not had over 500. So if you drew a line through most of these years, it's going to be somewhere in this sort of, you know, 150 to 200 mil bracket. Should be what we could expect. Let's have some more. Once again, the probabilities in a statistical way. We have had 500 mils, but there was only once in that time. 54% chance of getting 250 mils or 8 inches of rain over the next 5 months, 4 months. I just wanted to move on to talking about drought and passes. Are there any particular questions about those climate stats at this point?